Before COVID, I went on a bike tour in France. And so I was in really good shape physically. And I was walking a lot, working a lot, just living my life, playing music. I was one of the first 20 cases in the state, so I got it in early March. I, I, I was so just beat down by it. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't go up the stairs. I, and I didn't have the aching in my body until maybe three months after. And then I had severe, severe pain. So I'm well into over a year. And my doctor then said, there's a long haul clinic. So we opened in mid-July of last year, and we have seen about 600 patients so far. We have provided referrals to 35 different specialties, the most common specialties being sleep medicine, pulmonary medicine, cardiology, neurology, and social work. I kept going like, oh, well, I'm not making this up. I don't think I'm making this up. but. You know, I'm not as sick as everybody else. You know, I'm not, I didn't go on a respirator or, you know, I can still do things. So, and they just right away said, no, you're not making it up. This is real. It's a whole spectrum of symptoms. We're seeing persistent fatigue, shortness of breath, palpitations or heart racing sensations, lightheadedness, uh, even loss of consciousness. A lot of the typical symptoms that we see in patients with cardiovascular disease there's a lot of overlap in patients with this post-COVID syndrome. Patients, you know, one of the things they ask for is what's going on with research? What are we learning? How can I help? What makes the University of Utah well-suited to do research on COVID and long COVID is really vastly intertwined with what makes the university an excellent research institution. We have the breadth of clinical and bench or wet lab researchers we also have an extremely good epidemiology group. The work that we are, have just started doing here is a study called Recover. We've begun collaborating with 15 adult sites, six or seven pediatric sites, and two pregnancy sites around the country. That study is enrolling people who have or have not had COVID and either do or don't have long COVID symptoms to understand what the disease course might have been that led them to long COVID, whether or not there's a genetic predisposition, what te blood tests like your white count or your course of disease um, early in your COVID course may predispose you to long COVID, whether or not you've been vaccinated or not vaccinated, and then trying to understand what the different complications are of long COVID and if we can begin to understand the mechanisms behind that. We've been working with the Long Haulers Clinic in terms of a study that we're doing where we're following people who had COVID during pregnancy um, to see if they develop long COVID. And we're also following their babies to see if there's any adverse effects on the children from being exposed to SARS-CoV-2 while they were in utero. What we found is that people who had SARS-CoV-2 in pregnancy were at higher risk for developing really serious pregnancy complications, as well as for death during the pregnancy. That also translated to risks to the neonates as well. We saw increased risk of preterm birth, increased risk of uh, neonatal ICU admission. And so really saw increased risk for both mothers and babies who had SARS-CoV-2 in pregnancy with the delivery itself and with outcomes surrounding the time of delivery itself, which certainly could also translate into longer term consequences for both the mother and the baby. Dr. Adam Spivak and I, he's from Infectious Disease, we are co-principal investigators on a small biobank here at the University of Utah, which is attached to self-enroll registry, meaning these are patients that are seen in the clinic and patients that we don't see in the clinic that can enroll in a registry, provide their demographic information, provide what symptoms they're still having after their COVID-19 illness, and with that, there's an option for them to provide their blood to have a biobank spun down and frozen. And the idea there would be over time, we can test their blood and try to identify patterns that may help us understand what's actually causing this post-COVID syndrome. I think one of the challenges as physicians sometimes is that 
if there's not a broad aspect of research to go to, to, to base things on, it can feel like you're a little bit sort of making it up as you go. And, and it can be hard to tell patients, I don't know. But partnering, I think, and, and listening to people and really understanding what their concerns are and being able to say, I don't know exactly what's going on, but we're going to partner through this and help each other out as best we can, I think has been a positive message for patients. One of the coolest parts of this whole story for me is to see a community reach out to a university and say, hey, we've got a problem and to not just throw their voices at it, but even throw their money at it and say, let's try to make this better. Uh, that's been a very unique part of this journey. I think the long COVID clinic is frankly amazing. And they're so reassuring that no, you're not making it up. We have lots of patients like this. I, I can't tell you what it means to me to know that there's a place I can go. And even if they don't have all the answers, they're gonna listen, they're gonna problem solve, they're gonna help. It, it gives me hope if I have another relapse or something, I'll go back up there. And if there's something they can do, they'll do it.